All right, folks, today I'll be diving into two gripping tales from r slash malicious compliance that will have you grinning from ear to ear. In one, we'll witness an ingenious librarian running the best lost and found service you could ever imagine. In the other, buckle up for a journey through retail chaos, where a switch in managerial rules leads to a hilariously disastrous outcome. All righty, let's dive in. If he says it's his, it's his. You sure you want to go with that? Posted by local librarian. As an obligatory note, I'm posting from my mobile, so let's dive right in. I originally posted a portion of this tale on a different subreddit and was advised that the full version would be better suited here. Alternatively, it might also find a home on r slash petty revenge depending on your perspective. This incident happened around a decade ago, so all the dialogue is to the best of my recollection. As in most public spaces, our library had a lost and found box tucked under the desk. The typical process was for patrons to inquire if a misplaced item had been found. However, as the sands of time shifted, so did our management, bringing us a new boss, whom I'll refer to as Karen, for simplicity's sake. Karen didn't approve of our lost and found setup. She insisted on arranging all misplaced items on a shelf behind the desk, visible to all. The theory was that this would trigger patrons' memory, and they might recognize an item they'd lost. This policy lasted perhaps a week before we ran into a significant issue. Like any public space, we had our fair share of troublemakers. Among them was Jim. One fine morning, Jim took notice of the newly arranged shelf of lost items and immediately claimed ownership of everything on display. The pink glittery onesie, the well-used pacifier, even the odd glove that had lain in the box for months. All his, according to Jim. We were certain that these items weren't his, and we voiced this, but Karen consistently overruled us. Her stance was, If he says it's his, it's his. Hand it over. Besides, he's helping us clear out this stuff, so why does it matter? That was until an incident occurred involving a toy giraffe. One of our regular patrons was a mother and her toddler son. The boy invariably had Mr. Giraffe with him on every visit. One day they left the toy behind. We immediately contacted the mother who was still en route home. Upon hearing that her son was upset, she promptly turned the car around to retrieve the toy. To cheer up the boy, we even sent him a photo of Mr. Giraffe engaging in library activities. We thought disaster was averted. How wrong we were. Ignoring the imminent return of Mr. Giraffe's rightful owner, Karen insisted that the toy be placed on the lost and found shelf. Predictably, Jim swooped in and claimed it. Karen overrode our objections and handed the giraffe to Jim. When the boy and his mother arrived to retrieve Mr. Giraffe, they found it missing. However, we knew exactly where it was. After some persuasion, Karen reluctantly joined us to confront Jim, who naturally denied any knowledge of the toy's whereabouts. The child, however, spotted the familiar form of Mr. Giraffe poking out from Jim's backpack and gleefully retrieved it. As Karen stammered, we echoed, we told you it wasn't his. You might think this was the end of the story, but the malicious compliance hadn't yet begun. Soon after the giraffe incident, Karen and Jim continued with their usual antics. During one of Karen's absences at a conference, she left behind a distinctive pricey water cooler slash tumbler. Jim, of course, immediately claimed it. When Karen returned and discovered Jim with her cooler, he taunted her. All I have to do is say it's mine, and they have to give it to me. That's the rule. That very afternoon, our lost and found box found its rightful place beneath the desk once more, with Jim required to describe any item he wished to claim. A couple of quick edits for clarification. Some of you seemed confused about my use of water cooler, so I've tried to describe it better. Karen was explicitly told by all of us that the mother was on the way to retrieve Mr. Giraffe, and we initially hid the toy under the desk. Despite this, Karen put it on the shelf and then handed it over to Jim when none of us would comply. Jim tried to claim that Mr. Giraffe was a chew toy for his dog. Not that any of us believed him, of course. After the box returned to its place under the desk, it took some time to break Jim's habit of asking about lost items. Eventually, he ceased asking. And yes, Jim had other issues, but they don't seem relevant to this story, like the daily mess of powder in the men's restroom. Jim... If you need that much powder, please see a doctor. Insert obligatory, damn it, Jim, I'm a librarian, not a line here. Wow, and I thought libraries were only about books and overdue fines. Who knew they doubled as thrift stores? I guess the next time I lose my umbrella, I'll know where to go. And hey, bonus points for recycling. 
Turning lost property into a fashion statement, that's innovation right there. Work on small freight first, alrighty then, posted by Andrew Hester 666. After being a long-time lurker, I'm finally sharing my own story. It's a bit lengthy, but the backstory is essential for full understanding. I once worked for a well-known home improvement retailer in the Midwest United States. While retail comes with its own challenges, today's tale revolves around my assistant manager. At the time, I was a morning stalker, senior among two other guys despite only being at the company slash store for six months. One colleague, a retired aviation engineer, who had traded a sedentary retirement for something more active, served as a down stalker, transferring excess product from high shelves to store level. Our department manager, my first and unequivocally best, set a policy for us stalkers to manage the heavy bulk items first. Items such as pet food, cat litter, and five-gallon buckets of paint that could be moved from pallets to shelves without unwrapping. An odd combination indeed, but our department handled paint and grocery. We started with these bulk items, gradually working our way down to smaller ones, ending with the smallest items like theater box candy. One particular Friday morning, with the manager off, the assistant manager took charge. She decided to flip the routine, instructing us via a morning note to work on smaller items first, progressing up to larger ones. We immediately knew this wasn't the best idea, so I suggested we stick to the normal routine, and I'd discuss it with her when she arrived at 6.30 a.m. She arrived as planned, by which time the other stalker and I had completed our respective pallets. As usual, the down stalker was busy with his rounds. I questioned her about this new method, pointing to the ten pallets in the receiving area, six of which were bulk items we could have sorted in under an hour. Our manager had us handling bulk items, he'd joke, to spare the sales team from smelling foul. Despite this, she was adamant we focus on the small, piddly stuff, so the sales team could concentrate on sales and other, more important tasks. I should mention that it was stormy that Friday, a weather condition that considerably reduced customer footfall. Only contractors seemed unaffected by the weather. After the assistant manager's insistence, the other stalker and I gave a nod of agreement. Unnoticed, I snagged her instruction note for future reference, having a hunch about how the day would unfold. Saturday's events echoed Friday's, except this time we complied with her instructions, sorting small items like candy and over-the-counter medicines first. Despite another 15 pallets arriving, we only managed to dispatch seven on Friday, four of which were bulk, and just two on Saturday. We stalkers didn't work Sundays. We operated from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., and on Monday mornings the managers would swap places. The department manager was expected at noon. Around 8.30 a.m., the assistant manager grasped the enormity of her error. More than 10 pallets loomed in the back aisle, and receiving was crammed with an additional 20 to 30 pallets, with the majority being bulk items we could have easily processed. Salespeople told us that she hadn't directed any of them to handle the freight focusing instead on tasks like tidying shelves. Word from receiving was that two more trucks were due that day, prompting some amusement among us stalkers. By 8.30, the assistant manager asked us, including the down stalker, to start sorting bulk freight. However, I had a class at 10 a.m. and needed time to shower and freshen up. The down stalker gave a knowing smirk, confirming we were leaving on time, with the other stalker and I citing our own reasons. On Tuesday, the department manager's note instructed us to focus solely on bulk freight, and he wanted a word with me specifically upon his 6.30 arrival. Before he could ask what had happened, I presented the instructions the assistant manager had given us on those two days. His frustrated disappointment was palpable as he took a deep breath, then laughed. He called over the other stalker and announced a $20 reward for the most pallets sorted. Although I didn't win, I received a consolation prize of $10. He really was the best manager I've ever had. In those two and a half hours, we completed 25 pallets. I did 12, the other stalker 13. We still joke that he won because he took the last bulk pallet. The cherry on top was the manager thanking us, giving us our winnings, and then instructing us at 9 a.m. to go home and shower because we stank. It's a tale we still laugh about to this day. Wow, now that's a testament to the fact that rank doesn't always equate to brains, huh? 
Our protagonist, the stalker, just elevated following orders to an Olympic sport. The assistant manager's misguided power move spiraled into a tsunami of mismanaged bulk items. I mean, let's just take a moment to visualize that scene. Piles of bulk items as far as the eye can see. A panicking manager and our three musketeers clocking out on time, leaving behind a chaos of cat litter and paint buckets. Absolutely priceless. Hey, wait! As always, don't forget to kindly tap the like button, share, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what you would have done if you were in this situation. Stay safe out there in that crazy world. Much love, peace.